Okay, so this is my review of Equestria Girls Legends of Everfree, which, yeah, it was, it was all right. I liked it. I still think the second movie's probably the best. I think that's the unanimous agreement that the second movie's probably the best of the group. Um, the third movie's good, too. The first one's, eh. Like, it, it's the jumping-on point. That movie is hard to watch, but it's the jumping-on point, and then the sequel comes in. Third movie, it's good. Um... And then we have this movie, which I don't know how to feel about it, because I do. there are elements I really like, but there's some elements I don't like. Of, um, But there is a lot of good to outweigh the bad, such as, I think this is probably the best thing about this, this movie, and I'll jump right into it, is that it deals with the trauma that Twilight, the Earth 2, I'm going to call her Earth 2 Twilight. <laughs> I know it's a it's Canterlot, but whatever, it's Earth 2 Twilight. Basically, Earth 2 Twilight is still having some psychological problems of, you know, becoming Midnight Sparkle. I really like that, because this is, a, like, this is something Starlight never dealt with on a bigger scale. She became a demon, but at the same time she was a villain and had to deal with, um, you know, reforming. But not in the same way that Twilight did. She's literally scared of herself. She is literally terrified of what she'll become. This is literally Jean Grey being terrified of becoming Dark Phoenix again. That is what I equip... That's what I kind of um, uh, compare it to, is that it's very much like how... Um, when Jean Grey became Dark Phoenix, you know, when she was afraid of, when she got the Phoenix Force back, and she was afraid of becoming the Dark Phoenix again. So that's what I kind of compare this movie to, in, in, especially because, again, it deals with that problem for Twilight, where she is constantly afraid of what she will become. And there are some straight-up horrifying moments in this film. There are some straight-up, uh, like, horrors, like, fright, uh, fright, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street shit. Like, there is, it just comes right at you. Like, there's some horrifying moments where, like, she's delete. like, there's that halo that dream Twilight has where Midnight's deleting all of her friends. That's terrifying! Or when she pops out of the fire. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably the best of this moment. And where she finally conquers her fears, um, it's really, I really love that moment, where she finally is like, no, I control you. But it still leaves at the same point where she's still afraid where that power can come at any time and corrupt her again. So I really do like that about this, um, I really do like that about this film, that it does deal with, hey, you know, power corrupts, and now you have to walk that line. Um... But yeah, let's also talk about the powers. I really like the powers, and I'm glad... Because again, I will say the costumes are a little... <clears throat> eccentric. But at the same time, it's like, I understand, you're selling toys, I get it. But man, those things are loud. Like, loud colors, everything. Yeah, it's just... Man. <laughs> those costumes are just... Wow. <laughs> I don't hate them. Let me let me let me st let me state that I don't hate the co uh, the costumes, but man, they are something like you you wanted to grab attention, okay? And I'm kind of glad that we're going into a superhero element now. I feel like yeah, the writers for these films are like, yeah, we know um, we know where our audience base is now. We're gonna have superpowers, and I feel like they're trying to compete with DC superhero girls, which is something I've also like. I've seen a couple minisodes, and I've watched one of the movies for DC superhero girls, and I was like, eh, it's all right, it's harmless. So I feel like that's what they're trying to go with is kind of go the DC superhero girls route and do something to that degree. Um, so I like it. I was kind of confused as to. Um, some of the powers. Um, Rarity, I can see getting, you know, getting constructs, but all she can do is make shields. I was kind of surprised, like, why can't she just do, like, the Green Lantern thing like she had in Power Ponies, where she could do anything? I, and, yeah, why is Pinkie Pie like Gambit? <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's a little strange. I would have thought that Pinkie should have gotten the super speed, because, you know, hyperactive and all that, so... I would have figured she would have gotten the super speed. Animal, uh, the um, whole speaking to animals, I can see that for, for Fluttershy. Um, Rainbow Dash should have gotten the weather control, uh, like, uh, you know, because again, she's um, in her other universe, she's a Pegasus that can control weather, so yeah, it would have been cool to see her like Storm, but I can see super speed too. Again, I would have preferred it for Pinky because, you know, she's so hyperactive. Um, she's so, um, she's so energetic that it could be, like, a charge for her speed. 
Applejack with super strength, yeah, I, yeah, that's that's a given. That is a to- that is a that's a good pick for her. Um, I just feel like Sunset got the got the uh, short end of the stick. All she got was she can see the future. I hope that evolves into something else. I really like. Oh, you're just oh, you know. I know you're the leader. You're the defunct two leader, but you should have gotten some. New- I know Twilight got all the elements of magic, and uh, you know she got all the magical powers. But yeah, Sunset just got future vision. That's it. You couldn't give her like I don't know telekinesis. Uh, all she got uh, maybe she did get telekinesis. Actually, no, I think she did. Did yeah, I think she did get telekinesis. But yeah, now she's Jean Grey. <laughs> yeah, why did I forget that she did get telekinesis and you know future vision? So there you go. Or was it? Twilight had the telekinesis, and she just had the future. I'm getting confused here. It's been a couple days since I've seen the movie. Anyway, um, so I like the superhero element we're bringing in here. Um, all the uh, actions, a lot of... There's some really good action in here. Um, the villain of Gaia Ever 3, it really mirrors uh, Twilight's uh, fear of becoming, you know, a monster again. So I really like that. I didn't like how we were bringing in another fucking love interest. Like, this Timber Spurs guy did not care for him at all. And I'm pretty sure everyone else did. Like, I'm pre- I've seen people hate this guy more than Flash. And Flash is- might get back with Sunset? Ugh. And here I am going, but what about Sunlight? <laughs> like me and about a legion of other people who, uh, who ship that ship and are like, there's a hole in the ship now. We better fix it. Yeah, here I because yeah, go back and watch um, the second film and tell me the creators weren't trying to ship them. Tell me you you could. Well, I'm not the only one who saw that. Um, but anyway, if you like Timber with Twilight, that's totally fine. Or Sunset with Flash, that's totally fine too. Me personally, I'm just kind of sitting here on the Sunlight ship, going, nope, nothing wrong here. Just in a state of denial. Yeah, although it is kind of weird that also that I find it funny that Flash is constantly with derpy with derpy hooves. So maybe Flash derpy? I don't know. I don't care about that character. Although I do find it hilarious that he's finally accepted. Yeah, you're not the Twilight I like. Who's a horse? <laughs> I hope he realizes that that other version is a horse, right? Just I'm just saying <laughs> that um, you know that's a. A magical horse, mind you, but still a horse. Uh, Flash, you need to get your priorities straight, bro. Anyway, that's the mi- the minor problem I have is the love interest that just gets shoehorned in here again. We didn't need it for the other, you know. We didn't need it for you know the first. I mean, the second and third films they were really good without it, and then this just feels like it's being weighed down. And yeah, but again, Guy Everfree was a co- was a cool villain because she was trying. It, it was try- it was a great mirror for Twilight, like I said. All in all, this is a pretty good film. There are some things that hurt it, but it is still a pretty good movie. The superhero element's really fun, and again, those shining moments are with Twilight um, dealing with min- the um, fear of Midnight Sparkle, just the psychological horror of it. So yeah, um, I really uh, really like this film, and I'm looking forward to the fifth movie, which will looks like it's going to be dealing into. Yeah, more equestrian magic is leaking into Equestria, into Canterlot High. But I am worried that, you know, with this film, it was more focused on Twilight. I'm really hoping that we get to see, you know, it goes back to the center of Sunset being the main character, you know, the main hero again. Because, yeah, she's in this universe, she's the head of the main seven. But anyway, so you guys tell me, um, what did you guys think of Legends of Everfree? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Just comment below, let me know. Once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.